Hi everyone, it's Chef Harold, aka Uncle Harold. I'm here to have a secret conversation about Chris Morocco. Once again, we are gonna put Chris's super taster abilities to the test. This is Padma Lashmi's Balinese curried samosas with green apple and mint chutney. We're challenging Chris to replicate this exact dish with every ingredient in just one day. He'll be able to taste it, touch it, smell it, but at no point will he be allowed to see this dish. At the end of the day, we'll come back and see his final creation and I'll be the judge. Hello, and welcome to Gardener's World. Not getting much. Like for a second, I felt like I smelled rye bread, but maybe I'm going insane. Whoa. So I have a small glass bowl with something sort of chilled in it. They seem to be triangular in shape with this area where, oh, oh, okay, it's filled. Oh my God. Wow. Reminds me a little bit of like a fried samosa. I don't think you need yeast to get this kind of bubbling. It's almost like, a, you know, kind of like a wonton or dumpling wrapper. A lot of spices. So we've got some dried chili heat. Let's say we've got cumin. There's a really particular aroma. Is it like fenugreek? So we have some ground meat. I would probably call that for minced lamb. It's a little hard to tell all the other flavors happening around it. Ginger and garlic. Let's go with some onion in the filling as well. I feel like there's gotta be an herb in there too. Maybe some turmeric. Huh, baby pea. Okay, so I'm now trying the sauce. Oh, wow. I don't know what I was expecting, but it wasn't that. Very bright and tart. It's very minty, but what else is happening in there? Oh man. I think what's tripping me up is like, there's something balancing the salt and the brightness, but it's not fat. It's like a little bit sweet. Something that's like sour, but has some kind of body to it. Ah, it's like finely pureed kind of like leaves of herbs is like kind of what it reads as. Cilantro, like that herbal quality. And like the fact that I feel like I'm tasting a lot of citrus juice, I would say it's, you know, probably like green. I would think that this is like some style of a mint chutney. Mm. Wow. I mean, honestly, wait, like some real talk. It's like one of the best things I've ever had. It is so delicious. Okay, so initially I was like, okay, this feels like South Asian, like Indian to me. I'm still a little bit in doubt as to whether this is lamb or beef, but I'm gonna kind of err on the side of it being lamb. I'd still put my bet on this being kind of a fried style. I don't know if samosa is the right word, but a chef, I don't know, could it be Chintan Pandya from Ada? Could it be Marijuana Rani from Spicewala? So we need AP flour. Is there some fat in that dough? Is there like some yogurt in that dough? The filling, I would want to try lamb. I mean, should we get some beef just as a backup? Maybe. Baby peas, ground cumin, ground coriander, turmeric, garlic, ginger, asafoetida, curry leaves, some cashmere chili powder, lime, lemon, sugar, and that's it. Those are like all the things that I'm sort of just like sort of grouping in this world. I feel like I still might be missing something, but we'll see where we are. Where to even start? Um, we need to start with making dough. This is Chris's Hail Mary dough. So we'll do a cup of AP flour, quarter teaspoon of powder, salt, yogurt. The yogurt's a wild card. I don't know that you need that, but it's like based on the Josh McFadden Zatar spiced tomato flatbreads that has yogurt in it. 
it's fun and I kind of know how to do this. So and we'll see what happens. For the filling, I feel like I got a piece of onion, garlic and ginger. I definitely didn't feel like I was getting pieces. Maybe we'll do a fine grate on that, but keep the onion as is. I'm gonna make sort of a master blend of spice mixture. Cumin, coriander, a little bit of the fenugreek, a little bitter, a little floral. I find the cashmere chili powder to be just a little bit more nuanced than cayenne. Some black pepper. You could also have some amount of like garam masala in here. So here it's like you've doubled up on certain ingredients. You've got cumin, coriander, black pepper, but then you have a little bit of cardamom, cinnamon, red pepper, nutmeg, and allspice. So you introduce a little bit of that like warm spice, you know, in the form of like the allspice, nutmeg, cinnamon, and then cardamom. Well, I think we all know cardamom swings kind of both ways. Cardamom's, you know, into the wine, not the label, if you will. We'll do a first pass at a sauce. Like it felt very finely pureed. Cilantro and mint. Let's see what's happening. I mean, there's no salt yet. That is sharp, you know? I don't know, there's something about the original sauce that was like really amped up. Tart, sweet, beautifully balanced, had so much going on. Like, does this have so much going on? Not really. Do I wanna start throwing like water and sugar in there? I mean, I mean, I, I guess maybe that's where this train is headed, but Maybe a different citrus. Orange. Summer, what about tamarind? And maybe this is a misconception, but I feel like there's like a tamarind track of sauces and then there's like an herby track of sauces. And I don't know that I have any kind of frame of reference for combining those two things, but tamarind certainly would add sweet sour, florality, and liquid. Listen, like flavor-wise, it fits into A-Vision. Okay, yeah, there's something very compelling about that. We need to cook off the filling. Let's take our lamb, onion, ginger, garlic going in. It's hard to gauge whether the color is correct. I mean, this is certainly a fairly turmeric-y vibe. I mean, tasting this, I'm like, yep, that's lamb. Did I feel that way about the original? I don't know. Peas. I freaking love peas. You know who doesn't love peas? My freaking kids will not eat a pea. Like, it's like barely a vegetable. Okay, so, that really leaves us just the question of where our dough is at and how that's gonna behave. Summer, do you have a rolling pin? I do. Oh, jeez. <laughs> what is that, what, what, where is she going? She's like running out to like buy a rolling pin, like the old classic, like, yeah, if you think you need a rolling pin for this dish, we can get one for you. Oh my God. <laughs> I mean, oh Jesus. It's just like, there's still like blood on it, you know? Message received. I feel like I was just gonna, you know, be a good Italian and like roll it out and cut it, you know? Like a little like ravioli, no? No. I mean, it just feels silly not to use the rolling pin. You know, it's like sitting right there and I'm doing this by hand like a jackass, you know? I got a little squiffy. All right, well, this one's a total loss, but that's cool. I feel like we're getting into a rhythm. We're not getting into a rhythm. Wow, we're having some problems here. Dough's a little bit wet and sticky. Seem like huge to me, but gotta just keep going. These are already looking a little too puffy to me. Right now we've got huge air pockets. That's not correct. 
the dough feels a little doughier than the original. It's maybe a bit chewier. Maybe the yogurt just needs to come out. The sauce might be the thing that I'm actually happiest with. Getting that fruit and that sweet and the florality of the sauce. Questioning lamb, questioning the overall spice balance. You need to pay attention to the, the meat filling. Ingredients, 70. I think there could be something in the dough itself. Technique, that I feel pretty good about. You know, we've got a pureed sauce. We've got a pre-cooked meat filling inside a dough that's been fried. I feel like all those key elements are represented here in terms of the techniques used. So I'd say that's an 85. Appearance, yeah, I don't know. I'd, I'd go with like, maybe it's like an 80 because maybe the dough, like the texture or something in the dough could give it a very different aspect. Taste, ooh. I mean, with the sauce, I feel like I'm at like 90, but the, the unit, maybe more like 75. The spices presented themselves a little bit differently in the original. I need to pay attention to that. Yeah, again, it feels, these are so thin. How would you do this without rolling? It's like a deep, toasty, crackery thing here that I can't quite tell if, it, if it's just like a different composition of the dough or if it's just like a, like a store-bought kind of thing. Does this feel like crazy high-end restaurant cooking? No. Could you get a store-bought samosa wrapper? Maybe. I would love to know if, if there is a samosa wrapper back there because it's just like there's something going on here and I feel like I'm the only one who doesn't know about it. I'm not getting lamb from this. I feel like I gotta go with my gut, which is that it just feels like a little bit more neutral than that. When I tasted my own, it was like, oh, there's like lamb under there. Here, I don't have that same sense. The, the spices could be masking it, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna pivot to beef. Oh, the sauce is so good. It's like so cool and sweet. So plan for the next round is frankly to see if like, if there's a store-bought samosa wrapper option to tap into. I'm feeling pretty good about my spice mixture in my filling. However, not feeling as good about the, um, the choice of meat. I, I'd like to switch to beef. Other than that, um, yeah, I'm feeling, feeling, feeling okay. Do we have samosa wrappers in house? So, so the issue is like, I have to, if there is a store-bought wrapper in house, I have to guess the correct name of it. Is it a wonton wrapper? Do you? Are you fucking serious? <laughs> okay. I'm now like thoroughly, thoroughly confused as to what exactly is going on. To have these flavors in with a wonton wrapper, if that's exactly what's happening, is wild to me. Like all bets are off. I think we want a little bit more garam masala in here. Probably want a little bit more chili powder too. Aromatics are done. We're gonna make a new sauce. This one's not going to have sugar in it. Definitely like the consistency in the new version better. I'm gonna cook meat mixture. We're doing a beef based filling. The beef, like as you can see, it's like a little bit fattier, a little bit richer than that lamb was. It's really like drinking it up. You want this like pretty aggressively seasoned because you're only getting a small amount in each bite. Mm. Boom, there it is. But we've got our wonton wrapper. It's a lot easier, I will say that. Would you need a rolling pin for the wonton wrapper? <laughs> <laughs> 
No, I don't think you'd probably need a rolling pin for the wonton wrapper. Okay, cool, we're good. Something like that, right? What's up, Chris? Oh, stop! You? Yeah, it's You're me. You're behind all this? Hell no. I would never give you this no. bullshit. It would have been white rice <laughs> and ketchup. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, do you know the, the chef in the dish? I took some guesses before, but honestly, I don't know. Now I feel embarrassed to even repeat them. I feel like this, this to me is like, it's almost a samosa. Mm -hmm. And then in terms of the chef, I don't know. All right, Chris, I present to you Padma Lakshmi's Balinese curried samosas with green apple and mint chutney, brother. Green apple! <laughs> uh. Yeah, that's a hard one, especially if it's diced small, man. You're not gonna be able to taste that. I was looking for fruit, man. I was looking for fruit in, in all the wrong places. You well, know? What did you end up using? I ended up putting some tamarind date chutney in there. You mm -hmm. don't necessarily think of like apple and juice in the context of a sauce. Although now that I've said that, it kind of makes sense. Chris, how do you feel about you scored on the ingredient side of this uh, challenge? In terms of ingredients, I would say 85. How do you feel about technique, Chris? Technique, I feel pretty good about. I mean, it's a pureed green herby sauce. It's a fried wonton wrapped beef samosa, 90. And then about appearance, what do you think your grade was for appearance, Chris? I'm sorry, appearance, like that's a 95. It looks pretty close, man. The only difference you can tell like appearance wise is just a tiny bit of color and texture variation in the sauce. Can you give us a score for your taste? I'd say like seeing what I'm seeing now, plain light of day, I'd give myself maybe 82. Wow. I feel very good about it. No <laughs> lifelines today, I will say. But that's good. No lifelines. That's good. None of that. Is this beef? Yeah, it is beef, correct. Ah, okay, all right. First she sauteed the vegetables, added the balsamic vinegar, and then added the meat and all the other stuff on top of that. Balsamic vinegar. Amateur powder, cayenne, cilantro. Amateur powder. It's the green mango powder. Interesting. I mean, tasting it now, it's like, okay, like a little bit of that aggressive bite to the filling. Yeah. I could see that there could be something kind of like acidic, something kind of tart to it. You know, I heard you made your own dough too, huh? You know, usually these folks want me to make my own doughs for stuff. They don't want me taking any shortcuts, you know? So I was like sitting there making flatbread dough, frying it up, and it was not half bad. Just, you know, where am I lacking technique wise? For technique, it seemed like instead of using a saucepan, you use a saute pan. That's one thing. And then the other thing also is she only fried in a one inch frying situation and you did a deep fry. You also missed the egg part for sealing your wonton wrappers. Oh, egg. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I usually just do water. The ingredients gave you a score of 80. Technique gave you a score of 86. Chris, your final score average added up to 86. How do you feel about that? I feel okay about that. I feel, honestly, I feel really okay about that. Some real sneaky surprises in this one. But I think, you know, I think I made it a good fight. Well, thanks for doing this, man. I appreciate it. No doubt, baby. I'll see you in Philly soon, man. Yeah, hopefully we can connect before you head out west, okay? Yes, sir. Is it like a black caraway kind of situation? <laughs> Jesus Christ, was that a child or a dog? <laughs> like, I literally, I don't know. Unknown. <laughs> Holy shit.